All right, today we're gonna be talking about the top signs that your ex is unhappy in their new relationship. So basically, the purpose of this video was meant to target people who are interested in learning if their ex is unhappy in their rebound relationship. But really, as you're gonna go through some of the signs in this video, you'll find that there's a lot of applications between how you are feeling about your current relationship, and also if you ever kind of thought your partner, if they're ever unhappy in a relationship, they'll be exhibiting some of these signs as well. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Sign number one, the frequency of conversation time with you. So this is actually gonna be kind of a running theme throughout all of the signs that we're gonna be talking about today, and that is investment. How much time is your ex investing into talking with you even though they have this new person? So I've done a few videos on how to get commitments from exes or how to get commitments from men or women when they're not really wanting to commit to you. And we talk about like these six factors, right? How satisfied they are in the relationship. Um, are there better alternatives? How much they have invested? The uh, scarcity factor, the urgency factor, and the fear of loss factor. Yet out of all these six aspects, there's one sort of component that reigns supreme and that is investment. It is by far the most important thing to get. So when researchers were trying to study when people are most unhappy in the relationships in regards to if they're contacting an ex, here's what they found. Researchers basically found that the more serious the relationship is with the new person, the less likely your ex is to reach out to you. That means if your ex is in a relationship where they are nearly engaged or married, they're usually not going to reach out to you. Yet the very same researchers who said it was rare for an ex to reach out to you if they were in a more serious relationship found that if you did find them reaching out to you on a pretty frequent basis, it is a potential sign that they are unhappy with their current relationship. So to make it very simple, if your ex is in a new relationship and they're spending a lot of time having conversations with you, even if it's about normal things and you're finding that they're spending more time talking to you than they are with the new person, it is a sign that they are generally unhappy with that new relationship. Sign number two, relying on you for emotional support. So where sign number one is all about the frequency of conversations that your ex is having with you even though they're with this new person, sign number two is all about the topic and quality of those conversations. We kind of have an innate gut feeling on what's okay to talk about outside of our relationships and what's not okay to talk about outside of our relationships. So if your ex is with this new person and they're talking to you and texting you and they're talking to you about things that they should really be keeping in their relationship, they're relying on you for emotional support, it is also a sign that they tend to be unhappy in that relationship. And it can mean a couple of things. Number one, that person is simply just not giving them the emotional support that they crave and feel they need. Number two is potentially they got so used to how good you would be able to sort of handle the emotional support function that they become reliant on you for that. Sign number three, having them attempt to make you jealous with the new person. Generally speaking, if you are in a happy and committed relationship, you're not thinking about your ex or making your ex jealous at all. And yet, there are some exes out there who are so hung up on their breakup that they will literally use the new person as a pawn to make their ex jealous, to quote unquote, win the breakup. So if you're seeing this type of behavior happen, it is usually a sign that they aren't necessarily unhappy in the relationship, but they're not really committed or involved in the relationship. They don't have respect for that new person because they're essentially just treating the new person as a pawn to make you jealous. Real quick, I wanna say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you 
you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. Sign number four, the item exchange hasn't occurred yet. Now there are certain tropes that almost all breakups have. You know, you have the knockout drag out fight punctuating the end of the breakup. You have one party begging for the other party back after the breakup. And then sometimes you have the crazy ex who burns all the clothes and smashes all the pictures. And yet the most common trope we see is actually the item exchange. Usually you tend to exchange items when you're in the middle of a relationship. And when the breakup happens and the items are deemed important enough, you have to meet up to exchange the items. Hey, I left this at your house. Can I do that? Well, most of the time exes will reach out to you or you will reach out to them and the item exchange will kind of go off without a hitch. Though sometimes what will happen is your ex, you reach out to them, you maybe have some items there at their house that you are very interested in retrieving. They say, oh yeah, sure, come right over. You can, you can get those whenever. And then every single time the day happens when this exchange is supposed to go down, they cancel and reschedule. They've done this multiple times. Why? Why is this a sign that they are unhappy in their new relationship? After all, they're moved on to a new relationship. Well, I don't necessarily think it's a technical unhappiness aspect. I think it's more of a keeping the options open aspect in case things don't work out with this new person. So they're thinking, well, I wanna make sure that I have an instant way of communicating and kind of having some power over my ex. So I will hold the items here and kind of just sort of see how things play out with this new person. Now, I don't know about you, but not many relationships built on that foundation usually work out too well in the end. Sign number five, they spend more time with their friends than they do with the new person. So again, this is kind of like a subsection of the very first sign. Investment, where are they investing their time? If they're investing their time talking to you, that's usually a sign that they're unhappy with their new relationship. But it can also be true in regards to the sphere of influence. Now, what is the sphere of influence? Simply put, the sphere of influence is the people whose your ex surrounds themselves with, whose opinions kind of matter and make an impact on the way they have their world outlook, right? So if your ex is spending more time outside of his new or her new relationship with their sphere of influence friends, it's usually a sign that they're not happy in that relationship. The problem with this and why you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt is you usually have no accurate way of telling time in this way. You're usually having to rely on the sphere of influence kind of blabbing their mouths about what's going on. So I would say take it with a grain of salt, but if you are able somehow to gain insight into how your ex is spending their time with their mutual friends or with their sphere of influence friends, eh, it's something to pay attention to. Sign number six, their new person becomes intimidated by your secure attachment. Without a doubt, the most important component or concept that you need to adopt if you're interested in basically just getting over a breakup or trying to get next back or whatever you wanna do after the breakup, it's to adopt a more secure attachment. In fact, we've had entire strategies that revolve around this very concept. Many of you may be familiar with my being there strategy, which essentially revolves around attachment styles. Usually what you have is an ex who has an avoidant attachment style and your best way of kind of getting that person back or becoming interesting to them again is to adopt more secure tendencies when you yourself have anxious tendencies. So if you're able to shift some of your anxious tendencies into being more secure tendencies, something interesting happens. Your ex all of a sudden takes notice of you. Yet something more interesting can happen when your ex is with a new person. If that new person who has anxious tendencies becomes intimidated by the fact that you're still sticking around, you're just doing nothing but being there, you have the secure tendencies and they become intimidated by you, usually that's enough to kind of create enough of a grating so that it gets on the avoidance nerves. Sign number seven, the new person reaches out telling you to back off. So just following the logical cause and effect that happens when you have secure attachment styles and your ex's new person is becoming intimidated by the fact that he or she is still friends with their ex, if that new person reaches out to you directly and tells you to back off, you know for a fact things are not great. Because the truth is, if things were great, your ex would not be entertaining even talking to you. 
I don't know about you, but I've never been in a relationship where I've felt okay with a woman being friends with her ex outside of, you know, they share a child together or they share a dog together or something like that where they're kind of forced to interact. I would not be okay with it. And most people are not okay with it because they are worried about the aspect of getting back together. And so if the new person's reaching out to you, it means that they're harboring these fears. And usually these fears become these self-fulfilling prophecies, which creates conflict. Sign number eight, paying attention to how quickly they like or comment on your social media updates. I had a client a few months ago tell me this really interesting story, which is what led to me even including this sign. So basically she would post a social media update on her Facebook account or Instagram account. I can't really remember off the top of my head, but she would basically post the thing right before bed. So it'd be like at midnight. So she posts the update, goes to bed right before she's about to drift off to sleep. Her phone buzzes with a notification. Her ex who is with someone new has liked her post. She kind of doesn't think much of it, goes to bed, then repeats the same thing the next day. And again, really late at night, the ex would like the next post. And this happened like three or four times in a row. Usually I don't put a lot of stock into an ex liking or commenting on a social media post, but if you're noticing a consistent pattern while they are in a new relationship, especially during the timing of when it's occurring, if it's happening in the middle of the night when they're kind of alone, when they're kind of lonely, when they're kind of reminiscing or having nostalgia about the past breakup, usually a sign that things are not great in that new relationship. Sign number nine, the phantom X syndrome. This is less of a sign and more of a concept that I think you kind of need to understand about avoidant exes. Now we've done lots of research and found that most of our clients tend to be anxious and most of their exes tend to be avoidant. Big shocker. What's interesting about avoidance is they always like to have this one foot in the door and one foot out the door mentality. This is when they feel safe and it makes sense. An avoidant does not want commitment. And so the best relationship for them is the relationship that they cannot have. So oftentimes there's different, different tipping points of when an avoidant will get scared, but they do like to exist one foot in the door, one foot out the door. That's oftentimes why they won't say I love you or they won't fully commit to you even though you're doing everything a committed couple would be doing. They have what we like to call the phantom X syndrome, an obsession about the one that got away. And they like this because the one that got away is inherently ungettable. And yet you are usually the one that got away. And so when they're new with that new person and nostalgia kicks in after they feel like, okay, I feel safe to kind of miss them now, it creates enough conflict for that new person if they have anxious tendencies to notice and start freaking out about, which of course kind of creates, you know, a breakup. Sign number 10 an uptick in their frequency of social media posts since dating the new person. Now this inherently does not seem to make sense. If they're dating a new person, wouldn't they of course be posting more on social media with that new person? And yet every single bit of research I've come across says the exact opposite. Usually couples who are happy are the couples who don't spend a lot of time on social media. They spend most of their time by themselves together right? Consistent studies have shown that the amount of time and the frequency of social media use were both related to greater levels of depression. In other words, the more often your ex is posting on social media, the more depressed they usually are internally. So if you're noticing a consistent uptick since they've dated the new person with their social media posts or comments or likes and stuff like that, well, usually a sign things are not great.